Hi everyone. Again, welcome to this uh, session um, of uh, the LPS. Uh, today probably will be the last lecture. Um, we have covered so many things over the last uh, several weeks. Um, started with uh, looking at the Linux, then went into programming. We started with uh, Perl. We covered Tickle. Then we also covered Python. Um, and today we are going to talk about make files. Make files are one of the key uh, utilities um, for the um, uh, running a program automatically. Um, the reason why we use make files is because um, we want to capture the dependencies and uh, essentially like use the dependencies to do certain things as well as not do certain things. So in a serial processing of uh, file, basically, uh, if you are doing something to one file and then you are going doing something else, and if you um, if there is an error occurring at one point, maybe you need to back out to some some place before you can continue. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you find some uh, error um and then you have done some already like few processing steps you don't want to go back all the way to the beginning and then do the processing all over again you want to capture from the middle wherever it it, uh, it is successful from that point onwards you want to move forward and for these kind of things a make file is uh, used where um, you can capture the um the dependencies in a serial fashion basically and then uh, um you can use that to uh, your advantage in terms of um, what needs to be done and what does not need to be done. So a make file is providing a way for a separate compilation, uh, describe dependencies among the project files, and then that is the make um, uh, utility and use the make utility to do the compilation. So in a typical uh, uh, process for compilation, you will have like many number of um, uh, programs like dot c and they will probably share a common um, header file or the h common dot h and then now uh, so this is basically in a typical c environment so you have multiple stuff and then basically like they are um, assembled basically and then uh, from the assembler you generate the dot o or the executable which essentially like I mean now you can link it and then you can run the, the program. So now uh, if you want to change the C but you don't I mean the green dot C but not the blue dot C you don't want to compile the blue dot C again so you only want to compile the C the green dot C. So a make file once you specify how they are dependent it looks at the timestamp and it looks at what changed and if nothing has changed then it won't touch the, the particular file. So let's look at that. Um, so using the make file basically like uh, so make file uh, or make file uh, uppercase m carefully um, look at that um, those are the standard ones even you can do other files also and to run the make it basically simply the make is the command name and then you can say like make minus s file name if the name of the file is not make file otherwise it will just run the make file. And then you can also say like make a target name which is um, what kind of target that you want to make if the target is not included in the uh, make file itself. So a simple make a sample make file we will look at it uh, this is essentially like I mean, uh, the main uh, element in the um, the rule the make file is what is called the rule. The rule is simply target colon dependencies and then you can also like use tab for any kind of commands to get the particular file. So here is an example. So the target is what is called my underscore pro and then the dependencies are eval dot o and main dot o. So the top level we define these two things. Now once these dependencies are satisfied which command to run. So here we run the G++ which is the compiler and then dash O which is the output will be the my prog and then the inputs are eval.o and main.o. 
now we go hierarchically and uh, describe each one of the dependencies so for example eval.o the eval.o uh, depends on eval.c and eval.h which is essentially you can think of this as a the green.c and the in the, in the previous one basically and then eval.h is the error header file and then how do we get to the eval.o basically we do a g++ minus compile and then eval.c so this will generate the eval.o now let's look at the main.o the main.o again its components or the dependencies are main.c and eval.h eval.h notice that they are the same from both sides and now the command to generate the main.o is g++ and then we say minus compile minus c and then we do main.c so we can also specify uh, com uh, the comments using uh, hashes that we already know basically so the syntax is very similar to um, any other um, uh, syntax uh, regular um, c programming syntax you can say so um, basically like the dash o is to specify the executable file name whereas dash c to, to compile only no linking so the dash o does the compile and the linking of these two basically so you can also make a make file with programming constructs such as variables use of variables so here the old way basically on the left hand side that you see essentially there we specify the top level um, uh, target and then each dependency and then we go hierarchically and define it and this is exactly the same as previously for the my prompt but if you want to use the variable then we can define the variable up front as a header so for example c is defined as g++ objs or the object is eval.o and main.o and then the headers are eval.h basically so now we simply we can say that my prog is eval.o main.o that is the dependencies but the command is essentially like dollar c which is g++ and then the arguments are for the input is basically like dollar o yes which is these two inputs and then we also now go and do the same thing basically for eval.o which is the subsequent uh, target and then the main.o and then here we define basically like the uh, one more additional one which is the dollar obj um, its target basically uh, or its dependency is dollar header which is the eval dot h and essentially like i mean so only like you know eval dot h which is present then it starts working on working the way up so this is convenient mainly because now if you want to replace um, the g++ uh, compiler with a cc compiler c compiler then all you got to do is just um, change that thing and in fact you don't even have to change it inside the make file but just define it like make c equal to cc and then automatically like everything is replaced with uh, cc and they they take precedence over the variables defined inside the make file so fairly simple enough and now there are some implicit rules essentially the implicit rules are standard ways for making one type of file from another type there are numerous rules for making a .o file from a .c file from a .c file etc and make usually applies the very first rule that you need if you have not defined a rule for a given object file make will apply an implicit rule for it for example our make file we specify basically like eval.o main.o and then we say like i mean dollar c and so prog dollar objects and then dollar objects uh, dollar headers so here we omitted the eval.o and main.o uh, target so it applies the implicit rule and then basically it creates 
it's equivalent of creating this rule where it's eval dot o depends on eval dot c and then this is equivalent to this compiles that eval dot c and main dot o is main dot c and then it compiles on main dot c so this is the way that uh, the make understands this small um, make file which in this case it's okay but uh, make sure that um, if some something that if you're not explicit about it make file will assume and then start this working this way now let's look at another way basically which is uh, using the percentage percentage dot o is percentage dot c and then um, this is a very very succinct way of uh, representing um, um, a rule and um, essentially like I mean again here um, this is it just replaces all these things with uh, the appropriate stuff and then works it way, uh, works uh, its way to uh, do the make. So here you can see that uh, once you specify that and then now uh, basically like use the same thing. But at the same time if you do an empty command then it will not apply the implicit rule. So it is as good as specifying a rule and empty command specifying an uh, empty command. So just take care um, if you do not want any rule to be applied then you can specify it as an empty command and that will um, the implicit rules will not get applied. So that is one way to override the implicit command. Now there are some variables you saw like in the previous one um, we use a dollar less than so those are what is called the automatic variables. The automatic variables are used to refer to the specific part of the rule components. So we know that basically like target um, dependencies that is the general structure of the rule and then followed by a tab and then the commands those are the mostly a shell command. So uh, here you can say basically like if eval dot o has eval dot c and eval dot h and then uh, g plus plus um, is the command and then basically uh, eval dot c is the argument. So the dollar at will determine the name of the target of the rule in this case it is eval dot o and then the dollar less than actually specifies the first dependency in this one it is eval dot c. So now if you will go back and see basically when we specify like dollar less than that is the first dependency which is the percentage dot c which is anything dot c. Now dollar caret is name of all the dependencies which is um, in this case it is eval dot c and eval dot h. And then the dollar question mark names of all dependencies that are newer than the target. So in this case actually like I mean there is um, um, nothing in this one so basically like there is uh, nothing that gets defined for the dollar question mark. Now let us look at some of the make options dash f specifies the file name which is uh, if the make file itself uh, the name is not just the make file. So if you specify just the make file then um, you do not need to specify the doll dash f otherwise you need to specify dash f. And then dash t is essentially um, using the command called touch to mark the target as up to date. And then the dash q is um, also known as question. Um, basically, it looks for whether the targets are up to date, and um, if it is true, then it exists with a zero. And dash n is just the print the command to execute, but don't really execute that. So if you do like a um, um, dash n, like make dash n of your make file which is maybe like this it will only like print all the various commands basically like dash c which is like 
G++, minus O prog, and then it also um, says G++ minus C L dot C, and then G++ minus C main dot C, and then it links it. So um, one thing is like I mean, so this is one way to actually just test out whether your dependencies are correct. Uh, just do a, a dash n. And then one thing to note is basically like dash e, dash q, and dash n cannot be used together. So the, only one of them should be present. And then dash s is silent mode. That is, it runs basically without uh, echoing what is actually wrong. And then dash k is keep going basically, meaning compile all the prerequisites even if it's not able to link them. Now. In order to make a flow work, you need to also specify some phony targets. The phony targets are targets that have no dependencies. They are used only as names for commands that you want to execute. So there are no dependencies basically. So your these are basically kind of fillers you can say. For example, there is one target called clean, which is just to remove all the files. So you can also specify in a long form which is dot pony is clean and then clean is um, you can specify that clearly as the clean is a pony target. And then to invoke this you can just say make clean and then it will run that. So one thing to notice like I mean I want to mention here uh, once you have this is your make file. You can only run subsections of make file. For example, you can say like make eval dot o, and then it will only run this command: the eval dot c, eval dot h, and then g plus plus dash t. Only it runs starting from the eval dot o and then goes down. For example, it it knows the targets uh, basically um, the dependencies are eval dot c and eval dot h, and then it will run the g plus plus dash t eval dot t. For eval dot h, it just looks for that file whether it is present, then it runs the this command. But then it goes to the next main dot o. Main dot o does not is not a dependency. It's not a dependency for eval dot o, so it won't run. It will stop there. Same thing you can run just main dot o, and then it will run just that thing, and then it will stop. Only if you specify the target as my prod, then it will run everything. That too, only if there is any change in the eval dot o or main dot o then it will start running otherwise it will evaluate the dependencies if the dependencies are okay basically then it won't even run so here similarly like I mean if you want to just invoke the target team we just say make team and then it basically removes all the things. And then the typical phony targets basically these are like uh, to make all the top level targets. So we'll call it like phony uh, all, and then all is all the targets basically are there. So if you do a make all, it runs basically everything, and then uh, see whether everything is okay. And then the other phony target is the clean, which deletes all the files that are normally created by make, and then print. Which is printing print the listing of the source file that have changed. So now another uh, thing is basically the vpath variable. This is uh, a variable that defines directories to be searched if a file is not found in the current directory. And here you can specify a number of directories separated by columns. So for example here vpath equal to dir colon dir colon then go all the way. Basically the first one it is taken as the source and then the second one is actually the path to that particular directory. So you can say like vpath dir colon dir this is one of them and then you can say like dir colon dir 2 this is another one. So similarly like with just space specific separated ones you can specify as many as you want. 
and then if you want to specify like a, um, a directive like the lower case e path that is the selective directory struct uh, directory search where you specify a pattern and then what the directory is for example here v path percentage dot h and then that is in headers directory. Now similar to vpath there is also a vpath if you want the targets to be stored in the same directory as their dependencies you specify the vpath. Now there is also some variable modifiers are there essentially. The object essentially, which is uh, eval.o and main.o, and then we do a compile, and then you know that uh, the dollar caret represents all the targets. Uh, so that's eval.o and main.o. Now the source is actually is essentially the same as the object. Only thing is we substitute the dot o with dot c. That's what the syntax means. So when we specify that. Um, here we can just say sources is eval dot h basically like where those are the um, the source uh, the targets essentially and then the dependency is eval dot h. And then we can also use conditionals to change the way that the make file um, target get executed. So um, we can specify specific things basically, and then the possible conditionals are if if eq if any q if def and if n def, and all of them should uh, be closed with an end if, and then the complex ones can be you can use it as ls or else. So here is one example. So here we can specify basically like uh, either it's a GCC or something else, some other compilation. And for GCC, we can specify the libraries as dash LGNU, whereas the normal libraries are defined as something else. So now if we say basically like uh, if um, dollar CC GCC, that is if EQ dollar CC is GCC. Then like this dollar lives for GCC. Else it's lives is equal to dollar normal length and end. So notice that actually there are no tabs at the beginning. These are basically just assignments. So it automatically like I mean now when you specify the particular target and basically like the dependency and then the uh, actual command uh, based on what gets executed, it automatically replaces this uh, one of them. So that's pretty much what I have on make files. Um, if you have any other uh, thoughts to share, please do so uh, with your TA. And um, thanks a lot.